Hello again, this is Tom from Never Center. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Pixel Mesh to create um, this piece of pixel art. And I guess rather than showing how to create it, basically I'm going to go through what I've already done and when creating this and show you how each of the layers was constructed to make this, um, this little animation of a bat hanging upside down in this tree with these mountains in the background. Let me just first start by um, showing you what this looks like without any of the layer effects applied. So if I toggle that off up here, so if you go to this non-pixelized uh, version with no layer effects, you can see this is what I've actually painted, uh, which is not that pretty. Um, but with all the layer effects on, this is what it looks like. So let me go through each of these layers one by one and just show you how this is constructed. So uh, starting with the background, that's just that color back there. Uh, I've just got one effect on there, this restrict color palette. And you can see when I originally painted it, um, with uh, there's a um, the uh, original color is this slightly uh, darker blue. And I decided later that I wanted that to be a different color. So there, rather than repaint it, I just use this restrict color palette effect with the tolerance turned all the way up, which means whatever color I choose right here, um, it will just color the whole layer that color. So that's an easy way to go back and recolor something. And that's what I did just to make it a slightly lighter color. Uh, moving to the mountains layer, if I click and hold on here, you can see that those are all the the uh, items in this mountains layer. And uh, one by one, I've, I've got these four separate little mountain peaks. What I've done to the, the layer as a whole um, is I've turned the opacity down because when it's up, they're quite bright. And so I just found an opacity where I like those faded into the background. Um, I experimented with putting an outline on them, but uh, in the end I didn't like the, the look of that, and so that's why that's turned off. Um, but what I've got is this auto shade, and um, that's what's actually creating this snow cap effect. You can see if I change the angle of the auto shade um, algorithm, then it's it pushes that. So this is actually made to look things look rounded, but it also works nice in this instance to make this snow cap um, just uh, I angle it so that it, as if the light is coming from the top. And um, here these, uh, I've got two colors basically in this um, and the, the lighter color is doing this lighter snow effect. And so if I add another, another section of this, it's basically saying uh, it's dividing this shape into one, two, three, four, five, six different segments the two darkest one, the, the two lowest ones are the darker colors and the four higher ones are the lighter colors. And so that sort of gives me, I can adjust how much of this I want to be um, that sort of lighter snowy part by adding more there. Um, these individual mounds are also, are all just very basic. Uh, they're just um, painted and I, I actually just created one and then I copied and pasted them. So if I turn this off the pixelization, you can see um, this is just an individual mountain I just sort of painted and erased to make it look like a snowy peak. And if I go back in here, if I just if I wanted to make another one, I would just duplicate this and I could drag it and scale it and um, it automatically updates everything. And so that's a really easy way to get uh, several mountains in the background there. Moving on to the tree. Uh, I've got this separated into the branches and the leaves. Uh, with the branches, um, basically the trunk and just a couple branches here. The main thing I've got here is the the main sort of uh, shape. And then I added in both a shadow, uh, that's a main shadow, and then another layer of the shadow, which is the dithered part of the shadow. So first I'll just show you the, the regular shadow. What this is doing, it's masked to the parent. So if I turn this off, this effect off, you can see that this is sort of a big, ugly shadow figure that I painted. But I'm masking it to the parent so that whatever is painted in this layer will stay within the bounds of its parent layer, which is um, that sort of this, this branches trunk thing. So then when I go in, I'm painting and the, the color that I'm actually using before effects are applied is this darker brown color which I have in my palette here. Um, as I paint this, whoops, I want to be in the shadow layer. Um, 
it will automatically stay within the bounds of its parent layer, which is that tree. And so I can easily come in and paint in shadow. Um, and like I say, I can even move it around. Um, and since it's that higher resolution uh, layer that gets pixelized by effects, uh, it's easy to move it without it looking weird. Uh, let me just go back in and erase some of this. Um, when I'm in the regular paint tool, I can paint or hold shift to erase it. But I wanted a sort of another layer, another sort of level of shading that was dithered. And so I did the same thing um, with another layer, but I've got a dither effect applied. And so um, if I just turn that off, you could see it's, it's kind of just like that other shadow, la shadow layer. It's masked to the parent. But when I have this dither effect on, um, wherever I have it, remove it, it will automatically be dithered and sort of provide that in-between shading. And I can change this. I've got it on random dithering. If I put it on 50%, you can see um, that it uh, does just a sort of 50% dither pattern. And I can go in again with my paint tool. I'm holding shift to erase, by the way, when I'm in the paint tool. But I can paint it in um, and do that um, and then change the dither pattern if I want to um, and we're gonna put in custom dither patterns so that you can do some pretty cool stuff there then if I want like more of the uh, dither exposed right here I can just come and erase some of the regular shadow layer to expose more of that dither Let me do it like this um, but I think in the end I liked it I preferred it with a random look on the dithering so that's why that's like that um, and then there's on the, the master branches layer, this colorized, because when I go turn off all the effects, you can see I couldn't decide when I was starting this what color I wanted everything to be. So I just made it sort of a regular brown coloring. Um, but then uh, after I uh, started doing it, I decided I wanted to make this all sort of night tinted. And so that's why I put these this colorized effect on here to sort of make it blue. And it's kind of a nice dark blue. and um, you can adjust that to get just the exact color that you want there. Uh, and then, of course, I've got an outline and uh, played around with this a lot, whether you want it darker or lighter or whatever, depending on your tastes, uh, you can just adjust that. Uh, and then the leaves up here, they're very similar to the branches where I've, um, I've got them in two different groups. I've got uh, this sort of, because I wanted this outline to be drawn between them. So that's why I've got two groups of leaves here that each have their own separate outline effect on. And if I just adjust the color of this outline, you can see more clearly um, how that's happening. Once you, when you have an outline that you want, if you want to just, if you want to duplicate layer effects from one layer to the next, you can hit Command C to copy a layer, and then Command Shift V to paste the layer. You can see that that pasted all the layer, sorry, to paste the layer effects, Command Shift V. Um, and that pasted this, this new outline color that I'd chosen for those branches. Um, but let me undo that because I prefer the more subtle outline. But with each of these leaf groups, again, I've got that shadow layer, which is when I hold down on that, it shows it without it being masked. But if I move this around, you can see it's this, this layer that's being masked to its parent layer. And then I've got that dither, which is another layer that I've painted that's being masked to its parent layer. Um, and if I turn off the layer effects, uh, well, it's, it's kind of difficult to tell what that turned off, but um, doing those those two separate ones, um, let me, I'm just going to uh, turn off the colorize effect here so you can see better what's happening since it's so dark. Again, I can come back to this this dither layer, which is just a, a painted layer that's that I've, that I've painted inside of this, and I can change this. Um, to different dither patterns and this will be really neat once we introduce custom dither patterns where you could just paint your own pattern and have that automatically applied um, but that's a nice way to get those that sort of shading effect so let me turn that coloring back on <clears throat> all right now to the bat itself um, very simple uh, I did this restrict color palette again with the tolerance turned all the way up just because originally I painted this bat straight black then I decided it looked better a little bit gray 
And so um, that's why I did this, just to be able to adjust the color afterwards. And um, then just gave them a simple outline. And with the eyes, um, uh, no effects on there. I just did a dot for each eye. But this is the only place that I animated. So when I came to, to um, animation, in this animation tab, you can see I've just got two frames. And one of the frames, uh, the only elements I'm animating are layer visibility. So I just went to that frame and turned its visibility off. So on frame one, the eyes are on. On frame two, the eyes are off. And I set the duration to five seconds. So it'd be just sort of a slow um, animation. If I hit the, the uh, space bar, then it will start playing it. Um, let me speed up the animation here. Let's make it a two second animation. And if I play it, they'll go on for a second, off for a second. But anyway. I like them better slow. So that's how this was constructed. Um, and I'll link to the source file in uh, the description. You can download and give it a shot in Pixel Mash. And we hope that you love it. Give us any, send any uh, feedback or suggestions that you have for what we can add to next to Pixel Mash. We've got a lot in store, but uh, send those to pixelmash at neversender.com. Thanks.